This is the iconic Volkswagen Type 2 bus, known for its split windows, rear engine, and distinctive style. First introduced in 1950, the VW bus is making a comeback, but with a twist. The all-new ID Buzz is VW's electric play on its iconic bus. Holy mackerel. We're bringing the bus back after a 20-year hiatus, and it's our modern interpretation of what we believe a bus is like for the future. If you've ever driven a VW bus or even just ridden in one, it's something that sticks with you. Deeply ingrained in American culture, the Volkswagen bus is going electric. But how did it get here? CNBC dives into the evolution of the VW bus to see if it can make a successful comeback and revive the brand after a 20-year hiatus. Volkswagen was founded in 1937 in Nazi Germany as a state-owned automobile company. Full-scale vehicle production didn't kick off until after World War II. The name Volkswagen translates to people's car, with the original goal being to make a car that was low cost, low maintenance, and used little fuel. The Type 2 bus was the second model made by the VW brand after the Type 1, commonly known as the Beetle or Bug, which VW calls the lifeblood of the company. The Beetle was a very accessible car to people. When the bus was introduced, it filled a gap that the VW Bug didn't. You know, it was bigger and could carry more stuff, but it had that same character. The Type 2 may have more nicknames than any other vehicle out there, including the Microbus, Transporter, Bully, Hippie Mobile, Combi, and Minibus, to name a few. The bus has a beetle-based design that first was drawn out by a Dutch businessman and importer of beetles, Ben Pon, after a visit to VW's Wolfsburg factory in 1947. He saw this strange vehicle driving around the factory that was a, a VW Beetle chassis. He looked at it and he said, if you put the controls at the front and you enclose it in, you'd have a little van or a little transporter. And he pulled out his notepad and he, he drew a sketch of what he was envisioning. And if you looked at that sketch today, it looks very much like what the bus would become. And so the Volkswagen bus was born. On March 8th, 1950, Production of the first-generation Type 2 started in Germany, delivering over 8,000 units in its first year. By 1958, that number grew to over 100,000 annual deliveries. The Volkswagen brand completed its one millionth vehicle in August of 1955, but across the Atlantic, growth was slower. Of the nearly 8 million automobiles sold in the U.S. that year, only 28,000 of them were Volkswagens, with the Beetle far outselling the bus. In the following year, nearly 43,000 Beetles were sold in the U.S., but under 7,000 buses were sold. At the time, people were married to the idea that a car is what you use for personal transportation. It wasn't until much later in the U.S. that we began thinking of trucks and vans and typical utility vehicles as something that could also do family duties. However, things started to shift for the company as counterculture movements spread throughout the states and the bus became a symbol of protest. They certainly introduced the bus at a time when Americans were looking for something different. And somehow that different looking thing that's full of practicality and utility became this sort of counterculture symbol. The bus became closely aligned with anti-war protest, the hippie movement, and was even used by civil rights activists to take children to school in the segregated South. It was so different from everything else. And it was also in the right place at the right time. There was an unpopular war, there's conflicting ideas of what the American dream was. And so that culture grabbed onto these vehicles. It was affordable and it was a practical vehicle, meaning you could fit a lot of people in it. And I think those two things combined is what helped its counterculture iconic status. From 1950 to 2003, four generations of the Type 2 bus were sold in the US, the T1, 
through T4. Worldwide, VW says it has delivered nearly 19 million Type 2 buses since its inception, which includes the T5 through T7 generations. The reason the Type 2 was also really successful was because of the size and packaging efficiency of the vehicle. You can fit plenty of people in there. It was super reliable, it was affordable, and it was a great way to get around. The original Type 2 T1 bus was introduced in 1950 and ran until 1967 in Europe and the US. The model had a rear engine and no rear windows or bumper. Starting in 1951, it had 23 windows and 8 or 9 seats, depending on the version slash variation. It was often used to transport goods, as a minibus and later as a camper van. The price started at 5,850 Deutschmarks. VW wasn't able to confirm the price of the US model, but it said its earliest recorded US price was for the deluxe bus in 1959. That was $2,620.55, or nearly 28,000 in today's dollars. By the end of production, a total of 1.9 million first-generation vehicles were delivered. And today, it's the most coveted model in the series. There's no way to walk around a beach town in America and not spot a Volkswagen bus. It, it's just part of our culture here. There was nothing else like it on the road. At the time, in the 50s, it stood for modern mobility and the ability to bring people and families around town and, and across the country. From 1967 to 1979, Volkswagen built the second generation T2 model in Germany which had larger windows, a one-piece bay windshield, and a sliding door. It still contained a rear engine, but was equipped with new safety features like seat belts. Production of the T2 continued in Brazil up until 2013, when the last plant closed due to regulations placed by the Brazilian government that required cars to be equipped with safety features like airbags, which the bus structure did not support at the time. After 63 years, this marked the end of an era for the rear-engine bus, with 3.9 million second-generation buses delivered worldwide. In 1979, VW launched the T3 generation, which swayed away from the Beetle-based design. This generation was significantly larger and wider than the previous models. The new design also replaced the classic oval shape with a more rectangular shape. It was produced until 1990 when the T4 generation was introduced. Different from its predecessors, the T4 featured a front engine for the first time, as well as front wheel drive. It was marketed in the US as the Eurovan and was the last generation of Type 2 buses imported into the United States. The van segment in the US comes with a lot of baggage. There's a lot of feelings that come with buying a van. Sales of the Eurovan halted in the US in 2003, but the European model continued to evolve and now is on the seventh generation. Overall, Volkswagen says it delivered nearly one million Type 2 buses in the US. During that 20 year period when there wasn't a VW bus or van imported into the United States, it really sort of created this subculture of its own, of people wanting to hold on to these vehicles and wanting to keep them and maintain them and restore them because they, people thought, well, we're never gonna get another VW van. But now, for the first time in 20 years, Americans are getting a new bus called the ID Buzz, and CNBC got to give it a test drive. Holy mackerel. <laughs> This is different. It's a night and day. Let's see how it turns. <laughs> and even check out my in 2017, VW debuted the ID Buzz concept car in Detroit, Volkswagen's electric take on the original Type 2. There was really no better time to bring the bus back other than as an EV. The ID Buzz has several signature characteristics that are reminiscent of the Type 2. Uh, first and foremost being that massive Volkswagen logo on the front fascia of the grille. In Europe, VW has already started pre-sales, and the North American version is expected to arrive at dealers by 2024. Volkswagen told CNBC it does not release production figures, but it's been reported that the plant in Hanover can produce 130,000 units annually. The changing tastes in families and what they want from a vehicle 
actually helps Volkswagen in this case because the ID Buzz is exactly what families are looking for. A utility type vehicle or an MPV or a minivan. It's the kind of thing that does multiple things well. This thing Gold. turns on a dime. The North American model will have three rows, a maximum of seven seats, and a 91 kilowatt hour battery, but Volkswagen hasn't released any details on the range. It's larger than our ID4. The ID4 currently gets a maximum range of 275 miles on the EPA cycle. And since this is a larger battery, you would think it'd get more, but when you take a look at this thing, you realize that it's much larger, much less aerodynamic than an ID4. So I think you can expect a hair under that figure. The North American model price has not been released yet, but the European model starts at 54,000 euros. In the US, Volkswagen holds a small share of the market, and past scandals like Dieselgate in 2015 left the brand repairing its reputation. There's no doubt that a two, two and a half percent market share brand that we are, we absolutely need to grow and the brand deserves better. We believe that the impact the ID Buzz will have on consumers is not only obviously help aiding adoption to electric vehicles and, and of course a cleaner future, but it's a new segment for us. It's a new segment for America. People who have driven Volkswagens in the past have positive feeling about the brand and I don't think that that's going to be any different in the future. I think with Volkswagen's new line of electric vehicles that shows a, an environmental ethic, it shows that they're advancing their product. By 2030, electric vehicles are expected to make up more than 60% of vehicles globally, meaning major automakers are investing heavily in EVs, including Volkswagen, which says by 2027 it will have invested around 120 billion euros on electrification. The ID naming for Volkswagen is sort of our foray into electric vehicles. It, it stands for our electric vehicle lineup. And what we mean by ID is several things. Intelligent design, intuitive drive, identification. What's interesting about the ID buzz is that it takes something from the past and it updates it for modern times. Here's the first example of something electric that people actually have fond feelings for. A lot of the other electric cars, they're completely new from the ground up, and it doesn't call back to the past. It doesn't give you uh, sentimentality or warm feelings of the past. With the ID Buzz, there are a lot of people that have been very excited about this day for over 20 years. Sort of a homecoming for the VW van coming to the United States. In the past, the bus has been built all over the world, from Brazil to Australia. VW is assembling its ID4 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but right now there are no such plans for the ID Buzz. Instead, it will be made at its Hanover plant in Germany to be exported globally. However, VW says by 2030 it plans to sell at least 50% of its vehicles in the U.S. as EVs. Do you think that this is a vehicle that's going to help propel the brand? Well, first of all, absolutely. The ID Buzz, we do believe, will help propel the brand. It is meant to be a halo vehicle for the brand. To get people to notice the brand again. It's not often you get to reinvent an icon. There's some vehicles that are just timeless. It should become a best-selling vehicle for them, and I really hope that they keep importing into the United States and keep evolving it, making it better. While it is clear electric is VW's future, that still leaves us with one more question. We're seeing the bus make an electric comeback, but what about the Beetle? I thought that question would come. I'll never say never. It's an awesome vehicle. It certainly is an icon for us. Of course, I'll say with MEB anything is possible, but nothing I can share today, of course.